Yo, what's going on guys? Bobby here and today we are back with another video. So there was a new balance. I waited a full day so I can test out some brawlers, do a couple scrims, do a tournament with the new balance changes and I'm going to show you guys the 10 best brawlers in the new balance. It is completely different from what it used to be in the last couple balances so I'm super hyped to show you guys a new meta. With that being said, let's waste no time, let's hop right into it, and let's show you guys what number 10 is. So coming in at number 10, we are going to have Sandy. Now, Sandy was kind of near this position in the last meta. It's one of the brawlers that really hasn't been touched at all. The only recent adjustment that was made to Sandy was you charge super in 5 shots rather than 6, which has made it a lot better for modes like gem grab or brawl ball, as you're just kind of cycling supers really well. Outside of that, Sandy has really good synergy with brawlers like Poco, Max, just brawlers that are really good in the meta. Or just brawlers, you know, it, that are good in general. It just has really good synergy with a lot of the brawlers. Good in various different modes. Can be used basically anywhere. Both star powers are good. The gadget is pretty useful. Everything is pretty good about Sandy. There's no really downside outside of the range. But even then, the, ra the range isn't even that bad. So, overall, good brawler. Fun brawler. Definitely a top 10 brawler. But unfortunately, it just doesn't have that one wow factor, which is going to bring it to a like top five spot so we're gonna leave sandy at number 10 let's move on to number nine so coming in at spot number nine we have surge so surge got a little bit of a buff um its damage got buffed i believe 5.4 percent which isn't really super significant and it's not the biggest buff in the world but it's definitely a pretty good buff in general surge was an okay brawler it wasn't really the strongest in the meta but it definitely wasn't that bad and with this little buff and with some other new brawlers coming to the meta, it's actually going to shine a little bit. Surge is really well, does really well, sorry, against brawlers that you can three shot. So for example, B, Mr. P, Colt is a really prime example. We definitely had a good matchup in this game. Don't watch what I just did right there. I kind of messed up. Um, but yeah, it's a really good brawler um, into a lot of the brawlers that are meta currently. So that's going to be a really big help. As you guys know, a lot of how good a brawler is in the current meta is how good it is facing other meta brawlers. So when you have, for example, B and Spike in meta, and then there's a Frank, Frank is probably not going to be high on your meta list because B and Spike counter it. But with that being said, as I said, Surge is a lot of counters. Both star powers are pretty good, except for the one the, the one that you spawn every time at level 2 is definitely the better one. You definitely need the gadget if you want to be a useful Surge. With Surge without gadgets, you know, pretty down bad, not really the greatest. But either way, this brawler is going to come in at number 9. I don't mind Surge meta. It's actually pretty fun as long as Surge isn't extremely overpowered. So as long as that's not the case, we have a pretty good meta with Surge incoming. Let's move into number 8 and let's show you guys what we have for that. So coming in at number 8, we have Sprout. Now finally, Sprout got a nerf. It got a double nerf actually. The gadget now is 500 less HP when you eat grass or whatever Sprout does. And... The shot does a little bit less damage now. This is really good. The gadget nerf definitely hurt Sprout more than the uh, damage nerf. It does four shot a couple brawlers now instead of three shot, and you don't gain as much HP. So Sprout's actually making its way down the list, which we haven't seen in such a long time. I'm so happy about this. Um, but it's still a good brawler. It's still really good against things that have turrets that you can just shoot down standing behind a wall. It's good against squishies because you can just three shot um, from far away behind a wall. Against tanks, it's really weak now. And with tanks becoming more of meta, Sprout's actually going to fall down a little bit in our ranking here at number 8, but it's still a really good brawler. Still, both star powers are good. The brawler itself is good without star powers or gadgets. The gadget's good. So I would definitely recommend playing Sprout if you guys want some pretty easy trophies. But with that being said, it is not as strong as it used to be. It doesn't synergize extremely well with many different brawlers so it's gonna fall down our list to number eight let's hop into number seven and let's show you guys what we got now coming in at spot number seven we have carl now don't mind the gameplay i only played one game per brawler because this takes me like half an hour to record and i don't really need to show you guys perfect gameplay to explain a brawler uh, but with that being said carl is a brawler that i was really iffy putting at number seven because we haven't really seen that much. We haven't really seen any tournaments. Um, you know, it's only one or two days past the balance. But Carl does seem pretty strong. Now, from when Carl was meta, it's basically the exact same brawler as it was. Just with like 0.3 less range. So I would hesitate to say that Carl is a meta. But I really, really think it's good. 
the gadget, the flying hook gadget, is extremely strong, can be used in a lot of different ways. This brawler is super good against squishies such as Spike, B, Rico, Cole, any of those brawlers with low HP. It's a very strong brawler, I think, and could be higher up on this list. We just haven't seen enough yet. But I'm very interested to see what ends up happening to Carl. He could be the 15th best brawler in this meta. He could also be the third best brawler in the meta. We don't really know. That's why I put him at number 7, a little bit of middle ground. We will see what happens soon. But let's hop into number 6 and let's show you guys what we got. So coming in at spot number 6, we have Max. Now Max has been in the meta for a really long time. And it's definitely one of the most prominent brawlers in competitive. You guys are going to see this brawler in competitive all the time. Now when I make tier lists, I try and have a really good and wide range of things that I'm talking about. So if a brawler is purely good and competitive, for example, Nita is one of the strongest competitive brawlers, but isn't really used that much on ladder. I try and really weigh the fact that it's not used in ladder in my tier list. Max is kind of the same way. Max is always used in competitive. I don't see it a lot in ladder. I do see it a lot at very high ladder, but not a lot of middle tier ladder. But Max is a really strong brawler. It synergizes with a lot of brawlers. Well, for example, Sandy and Max go really well together. Max and any other tank go really well together. Max is just a very strong brawler and synergizes very, very well with a lot of other brawlers. The speed, giving speed, to, for example, to a BB or a Bull or a Primo, and they just run straight at someone's face and destroy them with no way of being able to stop them is pretty funny. It's good with range as well because you can kind of just run forward, snipe, and run back. But I would definitely recommend playing Max. Really good brawler. Has been a really good brawler for a long time. And I don't think we should expect to see a nerf for him anytime soon since we haven't already. So that's going to be the number six spot. Let's move into the top five and show you guys what we got. Now coming in at number five, we have Colette. Now this game, just like the Carl game, isn't really the greatest game. I'm pretty sure this was a base race. Um, but Colette is a very, very strong brawler. It used to get countered by Mr. P, and with Mr. P falling out of the meta, which is something we're going to talk about towards the end of the video, this pushed Colette really high up there and made Colette a very, very strong brawler. Doesn't have a lot of counters right now, is really strong against a lot of the brawlers that are meta. Very simple, a lot of auto-aim, uh, basically everywhere is just auto-aim, which makes it really strong. Um, but yeah, I would highly recommend using Colette. Very strong in the meta, very easy to use. The gadget is good, the, both supers are good, or sorry, both star powers are good. I would highly, highly recommend running it in a lot of the modes right now because it is going to be very strong for the next month or so. So definitely run as much Colette as you can. If you want like a rank 30 or something, Colette is the brawler to do. Super simple, really easy to use, good in all modes. Let's move into number four and let's show you guys what we got. So coming in at spot number four, we have 8-Bit. Now 8-Bit is probably the most powerful brawler in the game right now when you get all set up. But when you're not set up, it does get countered by a few things, so we're going to leave it at number four. It's also a little bit niche, so it's also kind of like only good in a couple areas and a couple situations. It's pretty well-rounded. It's definitely more well-rounded than it used to be, but there are some situations where Ape it just doesn't work at all, and all of these top three brawlers are basically able to work anywhere, and that's why they are the top three brawlers. But nonetheless, 8-Bit is super strong, does a ton of damage, is an absolute laser. Once a good player is set up as an 8-Bit, there's basically no shot you have at beating them. It's super good, both star powers are very useful, both gadgets are also very useful, so if you get anything, it's going to make your brawler a lot better. Would highly recommend playing it as a mid on gem grab, or as damage for heist, or control for heist. It's just so, so, so strong. Does so much damage when you're set up, I would 1,000 recommend... 1,000% recommend playing it. Such a good brawler. But with that being said, let's move into the top three and let's show you guys the three better brawlers. Okay, so coming in at number three, we have Stu. Now, Stu got hit a little bit. It has minus 6.3% health, I believe, and minus 3.3% damage. The numbers might be flipped on those, but I think I got it right. Uh, but this brawler is still really good. The movement on this brawler is really strange. The fact that you can just get a super and zoom around whenever you want is kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, this brawler is super strong. It's really good in Brawl Ball. It's really good in Gem. It's pretty good in Heist. It's basically just really good anywhere. Counters anything that's weak or three shot. Counters throwers as well. It's just a super strong brawler. And people don't even know how to fully play it yet. As the you know time goes on, we're going to learn even more about how to play this brawler. And its biggest counter, Mr. P, also did just re receive a nerf. That was like its only counter, really. It's only really hard, hard counter. So the fact that that got a huge nerf does help Stu a lot. 
the nerf pro to Mr. Sue would probably have been harder and it would probably be way lower on the list if Mr. P was still relevant in the meta, but it isn't really. Thus, we're going to have Stu remain in a top three position, but it's going to be only number three, not number one anymore. Now, the top two was a little bit of a toss up, but number one is pretty strong. So we're going to show you guys number two real quick. So I'm into the game, show you guys what it is. So coming in at number two, we are going to have Poco. Now, Poco got a massive buff for reasons I don't know. I, I thought Poco was actually at a really good place to where it's a really good healer, a really good support. It could definitely work on ladder. It could also work in competitive. It just isn't super meta. And for whatever reason, Poco now gets super in four shots. I don't think people realize how little shots that is. It's so easy to get four shots off. You can basically hit two people, or you can basically use two shots and just hit two people and get your super. It's ridiculously strong. Now aggro Poco can also be used with um i forgot what this what the star power was called screeching sc solo to capo is still way better and this brawler is just so good you can just destroy if you're running tanks with the poco you just cycle super over and over and even if you want to lane with poco it's super easy to hit the shots obviously because of how wide the spread is and then the screeching solo is so easy to gain or to hit plus the damage plus the health that you receive from it it's going to be a really strong brawler in the meta and i'm really interested to see how people use it in competitive but the number one is just so strong and I really don't understand why I got this buff. So top to number one and let's show you guys what it is. So coming in at number one, we have Barley. Now Barley is just the best. They gave him a range buff, which I really don't understand why. I thought Barley was in a perfect spot. He was used in competitive, he was used in ladder. Where he was good, he was used. Where he wasn't good, he wasn't used. I felt like he was the perfect brawler. And also the fact where both his gadgets were basically equal. Both of his star powers are basically equal. And now all of a sudden he does a ton of damage. He has a ton of range. He is such a good brawler. You have to use Barley everywhere. He is so, so good. He doesn't even need walls anymore to be good. You can just be on lane with Barley. Because you outrange most of the brawlers. You're basically a piper as a thrower. With a ton of damage. Two ticks doing 2,000 damage or more is just ridiculous. The super is really strong. A lot of area denial, a lot of damage. This brawler is just so good. It is definitely the best brawler right now. Don't know why they buffed it, but they did. But anyways, that is going to finish out our top 10. Do you, uh, do you guys agree with the list? If not, what would you guys change? Personally, I, I was pretty surprised Mr. P has fallen out of the top 10. I don't remember the last time Mr. P wasn't in one of these videos. videos. We probably have to date 8 months back to find something like that. But he is not going to be here. Anyways, that is going to be it for us today. If you guys enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe. If you guys want more videos about the meta and stuff like that, I'll definitely be giving it. Knockout meta, I'm probably going to be covering a video on that tomorrow or the day after. So stick around, trying to upload on YouTube more. But anyways, that is going to be it. I will catch you guys hopefully again tomorrow, and I will see you guys then. Peace.